Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Ramco Systems Q3 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Dam Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anmolkar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of Dam Capital, we welcome you all to Q3 FY24 conference call of Ramco Systems. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Abhinav Raja, whole time director, Mr. Subra Mr. Subramaniam, CEO of the company, uh, Mr. Sandesh Biladi, chief operating officer, Mr. R. Ravi Kula Chandran, uh, CF of the company, uh, Ms. Gayatri, VP Finance, uh, and Mr. Vijay Raghavan, company secretary. I now hand over the call to Mr. Abhinav Raja for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our third quarter earnings call. Uh, your ongoing engagement and interest in our journey is very much appreciated. As many of you are aware, we have been undergoing a strategic reassessment and uh, a focused effort on turning around the company over the last few quarters. Our commitment to innovation strategic fo and a strategic focus on select range of product lines and investment in automating our development processes are core components of our turnaround strategy. And these efforts are bearing fruit as reflected in our performance uh, over the last few quarters. We closed the quarter with revenues of USD 15.51 million, maintaining the momentum from the second quarter uh, uh, where we posted uh, revenue of 15.48 million. It's important to note that while our revenue has remained uh, flat, we have seen a promising reduction in our net losses. These have decreased sequentially from 5.72 million in the first quarter to 4.73 million in the second quarter, excluding the one-time expense and write-off of 13 million. And now in Q3-2, it's uh, $3.13 million in the third quarter. This trend is a clear indicator of, uh, you know, our turnaround efforts, and we are confident of the sustained improvement in the forthcoming quarters as well. A key factor driving this positive uh, trend has also been one of our cost reduction programs implemented over the last, uh, since the beginning of the financial year. This initiative yielded approximately $5.6 million of savings on an annualized basis for the current year, uh, contributing to an improved financial health and operational efficiency. With this uh, brief summary, I would like to now hand over the call to Sundar, who will provide you more detailed insight into our quarterly performance and the strategic roadmap going forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinav, and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining in this call. Uh, let me quickly take you through the Q3 performance. Uh, we are continuing on our path of significant turnaround, uh, simplifying and strengthening our business. Our focus remains on ensuring product quality, uh, product quality implementation with healthy financials. Uh, we have recently secured uh, strategic partnerships with the prominent services firm, both uh, Deloitte India and BDO. These partnerships will blend the Ramco's advanced payroll platform with the vast consulting uh, expertise and services offered by the partners, establishing a benchmark for the global payroll excellence. With this, we expect the growth to be led by platforms and subscriptions. As mentioned earlier, while the revenue is at 15.51 million, a very important aspect to know, know is the positive trend in the recurring revenue. Our recurring revenue for Q3 was at about was at 9.8 million, and from which is a, a movement from 8.72 million last last year at the same time. It was a movement of more than 1 million dollars in just a year's time. This marks our sixth consecutive quarter of consistent growth of our recurring revenue, which is very healthy. Our quarterly order booking stood at 7 million. This is primarily attributed to deal decisions, the prospects moving moving to the next subsequent quarter. While that is one reason, the other reason is also we have repriced some of the deals upwards and uh, so that as part of our deal tightening process, we have repriced the deals and, and in, our, in addition to that, we have also some deals, we have dropped some deals that did not fit into our new qualifying criteria. The criteria with respect to the size 
the product segment or the market. We have dropped those deals. Uh, this is again as part of the turnaround process. We have instituted a Titan deal review process, and that has really helped us to do these two things. So we concluded the quarter with a healthy unexecuted order book of 180 million. This will translate into revenue in the next three years, thereby giving us a good start to the next quarter. Our cloud orders that are primarily subscription-based SaaS solutions, we continue to grow at a healthy, healthy pace with a 59% of our revenue recorded from cloud and SaaS customers. In addition, there has also been a healthy pipeline growth. We added an additional 138 million to our pipeline in Q3, witnessing a growth of 9% quarter on quarter. More importantly, we are excited to announce the modernization of our flagship HR and payroll solution, a product enriched with a decade of intellectual property and innovation. Rebuilt from ground up on new cutting edge technology stack, this AI powered solution features a serverless distributed in memory architecture. This evolution not only signifies our strategic focus on key product lines, but also sets a new industry standard in efficiency and performance. We are excited to bring this modernized offering to our clients and our partners, leveraging our rich history to shape the future of HR and payroll management. In closing, I want to mention that our investments in technology and innovation continue to be in present. As our, as our turnaround strategy unfolds, we are expecting a stronger growth and improved results in the coming quarter. Thank you. Back. Thank you very much. Back yeah, back to the operator. Yeah. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Manan Poladia from MKP Securities. Please proceed. Hello. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congra first of all, congratulations on post posting a good set of numbers. Sir, uh, my first question is with respect to this turnaround that we have currently instituted and the write-off that we took the previous quarter. I just want to understand directionally, say, for the next 4, 8 or 12 quarters, how are we thinking about our business? Are we thinking about doing more of HR and uh, ER services? Or are we also interested in growing the MRO segment? Yes, uh, I, I think these are the twin focus areas. Uh, the HRP is uh, kind of a horizontal market where we, have a, where, where we do have a global presence, where we do have partners, and we are also uh, launching our new tech stack uh, in, in a couple of days. So that that is an area where we do see a tremendous amount of growth opportunities and we do have the solutions to really exploit those growth opportunities. That is number one. The MRO is a very niche area and it's a very deep area. Uh, we will continue to be uh, uh, growing this, this area, but the number of customers that you would see in the HRP and the number of customers you would see in aviation would be vastly different. That's one is an area of specialization, other is one of the area of modernization. So we will focus on these two segments and grow. Right, so so uh, just as a follow-up, my focus on MRO comes from the fact that there has been significant new flow of new MRO deals opening up in India and a lot of MRO business coming into India. So I just wanted to understand the industry sector there, whether we will be a one-time supplier and we will have an annual contract or is it basis how much MRO happens basis our software that we will uh, have a larger chunk of that, their wallet share? That is something we can't really uh, say that at this point of time, but uh, we have to understand two things. A lot of MROs are coming to India now, you know, that's a good thing for us, and we are wholly made, made in India software, so that is a very good place for us to be. And uh, But having said that, the number of uh, prospects we look at is a limited set. We don't want to really go wide and uh, everywhere in the world to really look for the MRO customers. Our solution is really deep. And based on what the opportunities that we see in the market, we will keep growing it. 
So again, if you look at our MR, we do have, there are many different uh, areas are there. One is the airframe MRO is number one, and that we have fairly, a lot of large customer base and a good uh, footprint. The second one is that on the component MRO is where we have a specific solution for that, and that is something that we have implemented in select customers. The third one that we are doing right, right now, building out at this point of time is the engine MRO, and which is a very, very specialized, it is a very deep specialization in that, and that is at this point of time that is being implemented, that product is uh, really being completed, and uh, we will focus on these three areas, and these three areas, we expect these three areas to uh, have a tremendous potential, and we are in the right place at the right time. Right, sir. So my second question is with regards to the depreciation that we put on our books every quarter. Well, I think that is a very large amount and my understanding is that it is not replacement JPEG, it is just depreciation from old assets that have been sitting on our balance sheet. Could you give me some clarity as to what part of that depreciation I should pencil in to be replacement JPEG for our own equipment? Uh, man, we capitalize the R&D expenditure. And we, uh, every quarter is 2 million plus. And this keeps on getting added to the balance sheet. And we depreciate over 10, over 10 years. See, the amount of capitalization is more and the amount of amortization is less. So that gets added to the asset side. So, so the, the not all of it has to be replaced, right? It's just old R&D that is being depreciated on our books. Correct, correct. And what would be our annual R&D spent right now? 9 million, 9 to 10 million. 9 million dollars? Yeah. 9 to 10 million US dollars. Right, sir, I understood. Yeah. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, a reminder to the participant, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Uday from Eco Invest. Please proceed. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, congratulations for a good set of numbers, first of all. Uh, my question is, how many percentage is the revenue from MRO segment uh, in the sales this time? And uh, going forward, uh, I understand you have a set of, uh, strategic time with General Atomic. So, are you in uh, conversation with Hindustan Aeronautical? Uh, I read uh, somewhere that you are already uh, in conversation, so uh, I just wanted to uh, understand that further. Yeah. 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 So, so aviation, if you look at it, it is nearly one third of the revenue comes from the aviation segment, which is the MRO. What was the next question? And uh, Hindustan Air and Specific, yeah. No, no. Specific, we, 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 no, we, we don't have a, we have a very small fed footprint, we don't really have anything large there. Okay, and so going forward, as you rightly say uh, that you are launching something else in MRO, uh, the engine uh, component. So, uh, I mean, in what scale it can jump, the MRO, so, MRO segment? Okay, can you say that again? please? So you just said that you are launching some new uh, version of the MRO software, right? Uh, MRO segment. So I just wanted to understand. Right now, it's one third of your total revenue. But what could be the future revenue out of MRO segment, and what could be the profitability in the MRO segment? Yeah. In terms of the MRO segment, if you look at the component MRO and the airframe, uh, those products are really ready. And again, the products that keep growing. But where we are building out at this point of time is the engine MRO, which is uh, very specialized even within MRO at this point of time. Uh, so uh, we do see a lot of opportunities and that is why we uh, even decided to invest it in the first place. But it will be very hard to really quantify the kind of growth that we would see there or to put a profitability number there. But what we believe is that our uh, some of the repricing that we have really done in some of these areas because we know that our, so our software is very valuable and it has got a good value in the market. It adds a lot of value to the customer base that we have. So we are very pretty certain about it. So we think that the returns will be pretty good. But at this point of time, we are not making anything into our forecast. But sir, you cannot quantify it, but you can say it can double or triple in, in fourth and quarter. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you give guidance in that side? 
But that was a quantifying. Yeah, that's not even quantifying. You know, we wish for those things to happen very quickly. But it's all quantifying. We don't want to really uh, get into that. Okay. Sir, uh, you did that uh, uh, one ten provision in last quarter, and uh, uh, the, the commentary at that time was that uh, it is done to make the company in the profitability. But still, we see the loss. So, when can we expect to get company in profit? Uh, the next quarter, the quarter after that? Uh, do you give? Can you give any idea about that? So, the one-time provision is what we one-time write-off is something that we did uh, last quarter. That is something that has been a cumulative thing. And what we are doing, uh, you know, every quarter we are looking at two million. Uh, uh, we are taking ahead. Instead of that, we did a, we decided to do a complete uh, cleanup, which is what something that we did last quarter. And along with that, we have also taken some of the revenue reversals which are also pending, so that we are really cleaning up the our uh, the thing, our uh, book, so that it is clean going forward. That is one. The second thing is that the additional provisioning we have taken this quarter is that this is something that we did that even the last quarter. You know, we have a change from one of our the aviation customers when the contact. Uh, uh, got terminated, and that is the provisioning that we have taken in the last quarter, and we are also taking it in this quarter. And uh, we are continuing our uh, discussion with the customer at this point of time, and we hope to really finalize uh, uh, the settlement sometime by uh, in this quarter. So, if you really look at our uh, bottom line, the numbers, uh, even if you look at EBITDA number and also the net loss numbers, we can see a steady increase of uh, uh, decrease in the net losses and. Uh, Heading into the profitability, depending on the, the the nature of the deals that we really find and the kind of optimization turnaround efforts we are putting in place, we would like to get into that uh, pretty soon. But we don't know how soon. That is something we don't know. For the entire turnaround, we have put from here going forward. We are looking at another four to six quarters for the complete turnaround. Certain things can happen early. Certain things can come late. But uh, the, the, being maintaining a very healthy balance sheet is one of the fundamental aims to run a profitable business. So for that, we are taking all actions at this point of time. So if you, if you, if you go through our balance sheet, you can also see a steady improvement from uh, last quarter to this quarter. All right, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vivek Kumar from Best Pulse Research and Advices, LNP. Please go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, my question is, uh, uh, you are talking about that you are confident about the turnaround. So, if I can ask, now that you have been in the company for one or two quarters, so if you can give a broad description of where was the problem in terms of is the product the problem, is product market fit the problem, is distribution marketing the problem, or getting the right customers was the problem, and how are you going about dealing this is my first question, because that helps us understand what actually went wrong, and uh, what is your diagnosis, and what are you trying to, because this is very confusing, because if the order book, let's say my second question is, if the order winning is now 7 million per quarter, uh, don't you think getting back to problems will be... Uh, much much more delayed because now your spending water book will keep on falling and uh, I'm not able to understand this uh, the revenue this is my second question this when in seven million uh, because in the last quarter you said there are many good big deals that we are signing and they are getting postponed so the two questions are first is what was the actual problem with Rambo is the product by itself and we are working on the product or market fit or marketing or wrong customers where will we go wrong and uh, what is your diagnosis now that you are fully entrenched and confident. And second is this order wins, sir. If the order wins are so low, then turnaround will get more delayed, right? Or my understanding is wrong. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, very, very uh, two, two good questions. So let me uh, uh, answer the second question first and then first question later. Uh, you know, the second question in terms of the order book, again, it is because of the delay. As I told you, it has been delayed. And uh, and many, many customers have been delayed signing the orders. And some of the deals have been also large deals. And typically, if you really look at it, one is that there is a, a you know macroeconomic situation. So many customers, though our order value may be small, but in general they have really moved the procurement to the next quarter, you know, or the, to the next financial year. That is something that we have really seen. 
And second thing is that aviation is again a slow moving industry. So all these deals are really coming from aviation as well. And they move from one quarter to another quarter, raises, so that has happened. So none of these deals have been kind of, uh, uh, you know, been the last deals that we are really talking about or being lost or, the, or they have been shelved. They are kicking alive and they are still talking to us and the customers are, see, if you look at the global market, right, the interest rates are really gone up. With the interest rates going up, the customers are also looking at what kind of uh, interest that they have to really service if you write the new order. So, they are also, they are also delaying this a little bit. So, that is one factor. The second factor what we have done, which is also gives a good segue to the next uh, question, is, is that also, the reason being, yeah, the reason being is that one of the fundamental things we look at why we are looking at the implementation quality and what we do with the product market fit. The, uh, we thought that we we should really look at uh, what happens first. If you go to the first, the first, the foremost is that what kind of deals that we are really signing. And one of the things I really looked at it and they looked at a lot of deals that have been signed in the past and things that have been working or not working at this point of time. It, a lot of things pointed into the kind of deals that we really signed and kind of contracts that we got in. So, the fundamental thing we did is that instituted a good deal review process where we look at the few things we look at it. Whether the deal, what the customer wants, does it fit into our product? Is there a 90% fitment? Or is there a 90% fitment? That is number one. Is it the area where we want to be in? For example, we may be very good in logistics in uh, logistics, but we want to really restrict it to Australia. If somebody from, uh, let's say, from the USA or wants to really ask for a logistic deal, earlier we used to be, we said we were not really good. So, based on the criteria with respect to the size or the market or the product and the deal value, we disqualified many deals. That is something that we have really done. That is number one. Second thing is that we add a lot of value to our customer and because of our product is very, very rich in our IP. And when the richness in the IP is not reflected, it is because reflected in our order book, but it was never reflected in our pricing. The customers were, we thought that we found that the customers were paying a lot less. So many deals we have really looked at those deals and gone through those deals and seen the kind of value we delivered to the end customer and then we have repriced some of these deals up, not down, up. So that repricing also takes you into to another round of negotiation. That is something that we are doing. So, it is, we think that it is a temporary phenomena in terms of customers postponing the deal. That is one thing which we are seeing uh, in many places in the industry. But the second is something that we wanted to happen. We deliberately said that we will price the deal higher because of the kind of value that we are adding to the customer. And that has gone into the further round of discussions with the customer at that point of time. But on the whole, the repricing, that we have not seen any kind of a strong pushback, generally customers are being, uh, you know, kind of okay with the, the new pricing that we are really doing. So, so these are the reasons. So, we, are, we, we think we are in a very good place, but at the same point of time, we will also redouble our sales and we will redouble our marketing. That would really help the overall uh, in terms of order booking. So, my, my, my thing on the second question was, if you are winning such low amount of deals and Profitability will never be there because it will never be in the sense it will be not even 4 to 6 quarters, it will be much beyond because unless your deal value goes up a lot, uh, how do you turn to profitability? That was why I was asking because it will be 7, 10 million. So, it will take a really long time for us to really start getting back to previous height and from there growing, right? Is my understanding wrong? No, uh, what are, you are yeah, partly right, uh, the thing, but that will come much later. Because if you look at our unexecuted order book, it is at about 180 million. So, there is not going to be immediate impact in terms of the revenue that we realize during the quarter. What can really impact us in this quarter uh, is that if the license revenue goes up, license is always a lumpy revenue when it comes to directly hits the book, which happens in case of an, an aviation. Some of the aviation uh, deals for lumpy revenue, that can really move up and down. But given that most of the risk, uh, the revenue that we are getting is moving to the subscription based uh, thing, so we don't really see an immediate impact to the revenue. When you don't have an immediate impact to the revenue, uh, which we and while we are making improvement and improving the processes, uh, adding you know, more the automation for the productivity, you will see the bottom line order automatically going up. So 
Currently, we are not seeing any threats to both both the top line and bottom line because the current the unexecuted order book is fairly heavy for us at this point of time. So, can you ask first question, sir? What was your diagnosis and where do you think and goes lacking and why are you confident that you can turn around? Like, why? But where is the confidence coming for you? Because and what went actually? Yeah. So, so one of the uh, apart from one thing I told you is that uh, you know we were finding deals. Where uh, that were really suboptimal to us. That is number one. Number two is that I think this is something we addressed even in the last quarter uh, investor call. We were going into the areas that where we are not really uh, too comfortable with. Those are the new areas. Uh, for example, areas in logistics in some areas. So we said we will cut down this logistics uh, BU and we will say let us we will focus on Australia and New Zealand where we are doing some good work. We will not expand into other areas. We were initially, if you didn't look at it earlier, the diagnosis was that the, it was, we were going into too many areas and getting into the, uh, a lot of new build-outs that we were not really doing. So we said we will stop the investment in building out the new areas, particularly in things like logistics, ERP and SRP, and focus on the markets where we are good in, number two, and uh, which we were not doing it earlier. And third is that improve the deal qualification, which is something I spoke about, that is number three. Number four, look at how to the implementation efficiency. Are we really meeting the customer de deadlines that we are really committed to in the SOW uh, contract with the customer? Are we doing it with the right amount of people with the uh, profitability? So, the all the financial metrics we are looking at, so we are really doubling down on all these aspects and looking at all these aspects at the same point of time. And we have, we have instituted the weekly and bi-weekly and monthly reviews to look at uh, many of these metrics so that we keep monitoring things that we are doing rigorously. Okay. So, when you see order booking uh, picking up sir, substantially, it's a few, few years away or few quarters away from your understanding of how you have uh, that organization? Uh, I, I think the kind of delay we are seeing, maybe it will be a uh, few quarters. I don't think it is going to be few years. It may be quarters, not years. That is what we are beating because the, the market has got a knack of bouncing back and uh, and, and, and I think it should be two quarters away. That's what I think. And which product do you think you will now, because now there will be new priorities like is it payroll, uh, what in logistics and uh, aviation, what on different, so you are you're also opening a lot of subsidies. What is your now new thrust, thrust going forward in terms of where do you want, where do you see both demand and where do you want to establish yourself? So you can throw light on what will drive the demand for the order book in the next one, two years. Yes, it is in terms of what we are doing at this point of time, we are looking at, uh, you know, the, the areas where we have established presence and where we can quickly implement things. We have a good, uh, good subject matter expertise and we have an established client. You know, that is what we are looking at. So, by that cut, we see the HR and payroll is going to be number one. You know, uh, as we said that uh, that is an area that has been really growing really fast and that has got around the close to you know, uh, close to around 50% of the revenue comes from that area or little less than 50% comes from that area. We are launching a very modern technology stack uh, day after tomorrow. That is something that we are uh, revealing that the day after tomorrow. And we are signed up with partnership with both the Deloitte and BDO because they look at our solution, they like it, they think it is a partner friendly and they think that they can really go to the market with what they have and it will be a good addition to their payroll services. So, the, for the, the number one for us is uh, HR and payroll. The second is that on the aviation, we told you we have a, we are recognized as a product, our product is recognized as a special one in the aviation industry. That is the second area. And the third area where we are very strong in, where the customers do see a tremendous amount of the value in our product, we will go to the cement ERP. The ERP for the cement companies, that is something that we are really good. And it is also, the cement is also part of the larger group's DNA. And we are very good in the solution that we have. And those are the three areas that you, we, we, we will really double down and invest. But that really doesn't mean that we are cutting down the other areas. We are really focusing, sharpened our focus in few select markets and few features in those uh, particular product sets. So we will be opportunistic in those areas. So we are not shutting others down. We will be opportunistic, but we are really bullish about these three areas. Okay, so thank you for all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manan Poladia from MKP Securities. Please go ahead. 
Hello, hi sir, am I audible? Yes. Sir, my question is with regards to this new partnership that you've spoken about with Deloitte and BDO. I just want to understand what is the scope of this partnership first in technical terms and fundamental terms. And secondly, what kind of additional business or orders are you looking to generate from this partnership? I understand that you cannot give me guidance, but if you could just give me ballpark numbers or internal projections or something of that sort, that would be great. Yeah, both internal projections and ballpark numbers are all guidance, and I can't really give you. Sorry, no numbers. But look at these uh, services. Look at these are all really global organizations. They are in the top five, and their uh, customers are really vast across the globe. And that is the reach that we get from them. And remember, and we have also moved from the product space, which primarily on is the product into the cloud-based platform. So we are a platform play. And given the platform, they can really make it as part of their services and they can uh, give it to the real customer. So when this, this when our... Uh, so beyond that, I can't really say that. But again, this is all at the inception stage at this point of time. We have signed up uh, those partnerships with that. We are doing talking to some customers uh, through them that is happening. And we are also launching our new uh, payroll engine the day after tomorrow. And uh, we will get to know more about it as we go forward. Currently, today we are asking and both optimistic and bullish. They are, they are equally optimistic and bullish. Right, sir. I understand that. Uh, sir, could you give me some sense as to, uh, especially in this payroll software business, when we independently sign a client, usually uh, what is the deal size like and how does it fluctuate depending on organization size or sector, etc. If you could give, just give me some color on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, it depends upon the geography and the headcount. But typically we are seeing in the range of million dollars plus in the multi-country payroll opportunities is the deal size. And, uh, um, you know, our target is to increase this uh, uh, outgoing by increasing the headcount uh, and multi-country. I think from that perspective, uh, it is more of the recurring revenue we are looking for. And the most of the recurring revenue growth we have seen is by uh, increasing this price. And that will accelerate now. Um, deal size, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, depending upon the developed countries, it will be, then... Uh, uh, 5 to 10,000 headcounts will be in million dollar plus. That's the rough, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, you can look into uh, color of, uh, you know, deals and revenue in that size. Correct, sir. I understand that. Uh, also, two more questions. One, on our current order book, uh, in what time frame would we look to execute the order book that we have outstanding, number one? Secondly, sir, uh, considering all the orders as well as the pipeline that you have, what would you say is your estimate for uh, how our recurring revenue or, uh, recurring revenue uh, flow should uh, shape up in the next, say, 4 to 8 fiscal? 4 to 8 fiscal quarters, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Currently, one uh, the 180 million uh, uh, of CEO just gave the uh, indication, and which is uh, uh, you know uh, three years that will be uh, you know three three and a half years that will be consumed. So that is the current order uh, booking will be consumed in three to three and a half years. And uh, past uh, revenue growth in the recurring is been around 12 and a half percent if you uh, consider over the last uh, uh, 12 months. At least at that stage, that rate we are seeing and we are trying to accelerate that. I think you won't be able to give how and where it is, but that is the past guidance that we see, that is where we are and we would like to improve and we hope to do that. Yeah. Thank you. This 12.5% uh, uh, is the same currency, is, it, is this in dollar or are you saying in rupee terms? It is in dollar terms. Uh, yeah, all the... Uh, number for we have given is in dollar terms. Yeah, and, and also you look at it, uh, Manan, is that uh, all the, the partnerships that we are signing, uh, the deals that we are seeing are all in the SaaS model. See, we have shifted around 50 to 60 percent of the company from the license to SaaS, right? So more we go into the platform based model, more we go with the uh, partnership, and that side of the growth will fuel this recurring revenue, the cloud-based revenue, quite heavily. 
So, and that is something that has been growing and with the Uh, I am so sorry, sir. Your last couple of lines got cut out. There was some network issue, I think. No, but the new partnership that launching, which is the modern technology platform we are launching, these two things will really help us. To... Right, sir. So, so, Yes, sir. I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your answers, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please proceed. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on improved performance. Uh, I would uh, the exact cause of the moderation in the deal win, is it some adjustment that we did to the uh, deals which we might have won in the past to a lower number, or this is a net new which is uh, a lower number this time? It's a, it's a net new, uh, Rahul, that is a lower number this time, uh, because as I uh, told you earlier, uh, some of these things have been moved out, either to this quarter or the next quarter, and some of the deals that we really... Uh, Disqualified those deals based on the uh, the pricing constraint. So we have done that. And some of the deals we have really repriced it, which is some of the other vendors have also done it earlier. In, and uh, we have really used it and we have repriced some of the deals and we are in the advanced stages of discussion for that. So, uh, any specific reason why we might have done this repricing uh, all of a sudden? Is it uh, is it likely we have uh, reworked on our cost model or uh, the profitability that we would like to work? Was those the concept, cause of the reason for this repricing change? Partly that, yeah. Partly it is that. And even the license fees we have really increased. Uh, these are all increased. There's not, no decrease has happened. And license fees, we, we should really start looking at our license price is something that we have not really increased for a few years. And uh, what we standardized it and increase the license uh, price, that is number one. And the same thing goes for the subscription to number two. And three, for the implementation, we have been, uh, uh, you know, trying to be very competitive, but we are not really baked into some of the customer specific things. And the, 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 the cost of the people have also gone up significantly. So, in terms of implementations also, we have given the new pricing list. So, it is primarily increasing the revising the, uh, the cost of the price upwards to the customer so that so that it really reflects the value that we provide to the customer. Right. And, uh, and in addition to that, in addition to that, Rahul, the other thing maybe you'll be able to appreciate is that uh, uh, traditionally, this is something that Ramco has done for many years, is that uh, you sell the licenses for you and then you go into the uh, a fixed bid uh, model for implementation. And the fixed bid is one of the reasons why we have had a lot, many of the problems. Because fixed bid is you need to be able to understand the requirements fully well, or the customer should not see the requirement, and the customer changes the requirement, or if there is a delay in their side, what we need to really do is that we, our cost, we keep burning the, cost, burning the cost. So what we have really done is that we have moved away from the fixed bid building that we have done and moved into the time and material. So primarily the licenses are different, uh, the contract for the implementation will be on the time and material, both are at the higher pricing. So we have really rationalized our financial model so that it mirrors the existing market sentiment. That's what we have done. Uh, that's quite helpful for this. Just uh, one more uh, aspect to it, with these revised pricing on the EMC side, is it only relevant for the newer customer or we may also do it? Uh, for the renewal cases whenever they come for the existing base? We are, we, are, we are doing it for both. Newer customer absolutely there is uh, no problem because we increase it and go to them and then have the negotiations. Then uh, the existing customers we have to tell them, we are telling them hey, this is our new pricing. This is our new pricing and this is how they are, we are signing up the new pricing there. And there there is some resistance because um, they are used to really paying some old price list for a long period of time. So there is some resistance there, but still we are persisting with the, uh, the revised pricing. That is something that we do. 
In addition to that, we are also giving a lot of uh, services, whatever services we do extra for them. Um, those things we are creating a healthy uh, change requirement, CR system, so that we go to the customers and say any extra value that we provide, any extra work we do for them, you have to pay us more. So, so we, are, we are really uh, uh, tightening all the levers so that we get uh, paid right for the work we do. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, some of these things are very, very uh, relevant uh, from a long-term perspective and also uh, for uh, relevance of the business perspective. But is it safe to assume some of these things would cause cause near-term disruption in terms of, you know, some client attrition or uh, stuff like that? And so we should bear in that, bear in our mind that the growth uh, on a like-for-like basis may not be so exciting uh, in case that option is not uh, that encouraging. We are not seeing that. You know, as long as we give better quality of the product and service them well, the satisfaction is very high. We are not seeing the customer exiting because of that. We are not seeing that yet. But there could be some customers, maybe a very, very low single digit percentage that could really happen. Uh, there's a deal, there's a, our revenue from them. If it is not material, we are okay with it. But there will be a little bit of collateral uh, damage that could happen. So far, we have not seen anything. Uh, but having said that, uh, many customers have really agreed and they are really looking at increased prices. They are not, though they have a, there is a, there is a little bit of pushback when we increase the AMC price and then they finally uh, come to an understanding and agree to the price or some price in between they agree to it. So, generally the customer pushback is not uh, uh, too high, you know, that has not really happened. The third thing is that the software that we do in terms of the value, the functionality is very rich and the ERP, HRP, aviation, they are all very sticky products. You know, if nobody wants to really take over one ERP and move it into another vendor or move from one payroll system to another payroll system, they don't want to do it for a minor delta in terms of the pay. And these are all very large customers. Some of the customers are really marquee customers and they have hundreds of billion dollars as their revenue coming in. And this is not even a material delta to them. So, as long as, long as we position ourselves right and uh, make the request in the right, right way and show the value to the customer, that is not, we should be okay. And that is what we are seeing. You know, we are really scared initially, but uh, things are okay. Uh, okay, I appreciate the color. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, there was this uh, note to account a customer obligation provision that you also mentioned about in your commentary. So is it is it largely done with, and uh, if you could explain the precise cost for this? So this is we were uh, with Heiko. Uh, this is uh, which is a pro- primarily when we got into this, uh, they terminated the contract. And this is an aviation customer. They terminated the contract. And after termination, we got a claim request from them. And once the claim request came from them, and uh, we started negotiating with them, that happened uh, sometime last quarter. But we thought we would could convene. Uh, you know, we should really complete that negotiation process by last quarter, but we could not do it because of their own internal changes, uh, uh, their own internal changes, and also then a lot of people went on uh, New Year holiday, a lot of those uh, disruptions happened. So we continue to uh, talk to the customer to see a good way to settle it. Uh, so given that it has been another quarter, so we have taken an additional provision at this point of time. So so that it really puts us in a... Uh, uh, finally, uh, we are being just conservative and taking that one more, uh, some more provision so that uh, it doesn't really hit us, you know, when the actual settlement happens. But the discussions are in the, at an advanced stage. Right. Uh, uh, just to understand it, uh, so we have booked the revenue for the same customer and at the same time we see certain concern uh, on potential recognition of it and that's why we have provided it again. No, we, we have really, uh, you know, raised the invoice. We got the money also from the customer that has been done and that has been uh, returned. What is the quantum of the money that we are going to refund? That is something that we have discussed. And uh, we don't want to take a legal route, nor the customer wants to take a legal route, because at the end of the day, you end up paying for the lawyer. You know, and, many, and so we are discussing where we want to really settle, and that decision is happening. 
So what would be the net impact of it uh, versus what we might have booked and what we might return? What could be the net impact for us? Yeah, almost whatever is needed, I think our estimation is that it's completed in uh, this quarter. Yeah. There is no further, uh, you know, um, um, major. I think the way it is going today, what we see. Yeah, and then yeah, last one uh, for RKC, uh, uh, I, about this uh, note to account uh, charge that we have mentioned on the employee cost uh, of some ESOP, is it a, a, a net negative uh, number which is like you, it has helped us in the employee cost reduction and is there more to come in there? See, uh, <coughs> we are taking the ESOP cost and we are also accounting the reversal on a contract exit from the company. Since many people have left and they could not this and they say the option, whatever charge we have already taken, we are reversing that. And uh, there is a next figure what you are saying. So, uh, is, is there more such to happen or uh, and what could be the jump on a sequential basis uh, on a or what is the normalized run rate? Is it simply this uh, existing cost and add up to that which will bring us to the actual run rate? There will not be sequential uh, jump, there will be economic direction because the model how it works is the um, charge is loaded upfront. It is a three year working period, so the loading is uh, heavy on the first year and second year comes on, third is still lower. And that it can become still lower if there are some reversals on account of separation. So it will not go up unless you issue fresh grants uh, to a lot of people. Yeah, and and outside of this uh, particular aspect, uh, do we see uh, a moderation in this cost or stability given the need for the people that we might have? So we keep on uh, granting, in fact, even we have granted today to a couple of employees uh, on a need basis. It will not be on a large scale basis. Yeah. One time we did the last time as a detention because we were struggling with the industry was struggling with heavy attrition. So do we. And what we did is a one time big amount of uh, ESOP which we granted, which we are not planning to do. There will be small amount of grants, but there is not going to be any large amount. So what RKC said, the um, you know write off would only should be coming down. It should not be increased. Uh, thanks, Sandesh. Uh, just last bit, uh, on the demand side, uh, what's, what's your uh, sense? Uh, is there any pocket of uh, weakness uh, you see from a macro perspective or any uh, tailwind that we see in a uh, specific market or, uh, or the product line? No, I think uh, Sundar explained that. I think the, I would say the demand side, it is not decision side we are seeing it. A uh, bit of uh, uh, delay and quarter on uh, you know decision be, being pushed. That is across. Uh, we are seeing it in uh, you know uh, across geographies. In fact, I think people are cautious in some of the decisions. Uh, but the demand and I think activity on what we are working that we have not seen uh, any drop. In fact, our inflows for the inquiry and other things uh, are also unstable or uh, increased. It is only the question of decision which we saw. Uh, big delay in this cycle. Thanks. That's it from my side. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dipesh Lakhani from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Dipesh, your line is unmuted. Please proceed with your question. Mr. Dipesh, please go ahead with your question. As there is no response from the current participant, we will move to the next question. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Thank you everyone for attending our Q3 uh, earnings call. 
um i think as uh, sundar also mentioned our turnaround uh, sort of process um you know is on the way and we are happy to see the improvement in um uh, you know our bottom line and we remain positive that the order booking also should pick up in the coming quarters and uh, we look forward to connecting with you guys next quarter again thank you thank you vikram thank you thank you thank you on behalf of dam capital advisors limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines